which dynasty assets need to have big performances in week one. All that and more in this episode of Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can also check out her work on profootballfocus.com. So make sure you go check out all the fantasy content that she is creating Kate, today we're taking a look at a few players that need to have big week one performances. I want your thoughts on this one. I, for me, it's Deshaun Watson. I, I, I just think after the six games that we saw last year, I, I need to see Deshaun Watson have a good start to the season. Do you disagree? No, I think it's going to be absolutely critical for Deshaun Watson to get off to a good start. I mean, this team has so much financially invested in Deshaun Watson. Like, there's no, no beating around the bush here. Um, Deshaun Watson, just to this point, um, I I think we had had this conversation a couple of weeks ago. Like it's not necessarily that even in this preseason here that he's looked bad, um, but he hasn't looked like Deshaun Watson. And I think that's like this big holdup for me. Um, you know, Deshaun Watson, obviously a player that carries a lot of risk, uh, with, you know, his, his situation and what he's perpetuated upon himself. Um, there's there's a lot of, of, I think, reasons to be hesitant about investing in this player specifically for Dynasty. Um, you know, you can kind of swallow that risk a little bit more for for a redraft league where, you know, the, at least there's a waiver wire, et cetera. Sure. But like it, this is going to be, I think, a make or break season for Deshaun Watson, his future in the league. And, and what are the Browns going to do next? Because I don't think... I don't think Kevin Stefanski has a whole lot of leeway here. Um, I, they're going to want him to get off to a, a solid start. I made a bold prediction today that St- Kevin Stefanski might be the first head coach fired in 2023. Um, we'll see if I hope not because I like him. I think he's good. I think he's fine, but it hasn't hasn't amounted to anything. And to be honest, Marcus, we know what this organization kind of does in terms of to- turnover. Uh, in terms of coaching personnel, et cetera. Like this has been a team that um, under current ownership has been very willing to move on uh, from, from head coaches quite quickly. And um, you know, I I think there's going to be a, uh, this is going to be a telling moment. So one of the reasons why I'm so interested to see how Watson looks early in the year isn't because of Watson and his dynasty value. I I actually just don't have him in a lot of leagues, but it's for everybody else. Like, for example, you and I really like Cedric Tillman. And while Tillman's probably not going to play early in the year, if I'm investing a second round pick into him or if I'm stashing him in some of my shorter dynasty bench leagues, like I need to have faith that the quarterback can eventually get him the ball consistently to make him a fantasy relevant asset, right? But if Watson's struggling and he's only completing 55% of his passes and he's not pushing the ball down the field, I'm going to get concerned. The same thing for David Njoku. Like, I I love David Njoku. I've got him in a ton of leagues. He's being ranked as a top 10 dynasty tight end. If this offense just looks clunky out of the gate and it doesn't look crisp, I I think by default, I'm going to have to start pushing guys ahead of David Njoku, who I might not even like as much, but just because – of the quarterback situation. So I don't need to see Watson put up massive fantasy numbers or anything like that. I don't even necessarily need to see the Browns like come out of the gate with like a four and no start, but just look competent on offense to give us some hope going forward. Yeah. You need them to look explosive. Like you, you need to see some of that, especially for uh, some of the other assets here. Now, like, you know, in terms of overall dynasty value, there aren't a ton of, um, you know, these skill posi- skill position players for the Browns that are ranked, you know, overly highly for fantasy, um, you know, but again, in his return last season, Watson, he didn't look good among quarterbacks with at least 200 dropbacks. Watson ranked 30th with a 79.1 passer rating 
32nd in big time throw rate, according to PFF 27th or sorry, 28th with 6.5 yards per attempt. Um, 28th in touchdown interception ratio. Like none of that has you excited for the, the other skill position players that, that he's going to be throwing to if they can't get this pass attack, you know, light it on fire a bit. Which I'm willing to throw out a lot of last year because in the six games that he played, the, the first game was, I believe, against Houston. He was just rusty. The other, Two of the other games were just in really bad weather. And then a couple of the other games, he actually looked fairly decent. So as a whole, I'm just willing to throw away that, that year, that six-game sample size. But if we don't see something in the first week, or the first month of the season that at least gets you feeling like, hey, we're, we're getting better and we're progressing – then I might be willing to start selling some assets low. Like, for example, Amari Cooper, who is being drafted, you know, not super high, but you you know, you're getting him inside the top 30 receivers. I might be willing to trade him for Christian Kirk, who's being drafted as wide receiver 35, George Pickens, wide receiver 37. I might even go a little bit further down and say, hey, I'll trade you for a Jamison Williams, who I just don't know anything about if that offense just looks like it's slogging its way through September. They play the Bengals in week one, I believe. That's a tough defense that you're going to play against. But again, we just have to see some encouraging signs that Watson is going to fit in this Kevin Stefanski offense. Yeah, I, I think that's very fair. And, you know, I, I I think another maybe underrated aspect of Deshaun Watson and what we might see with a full season is like, how does he influence the play calling? This has been an offense that has been so... Right centered around the run and it seemed like the move to trade for Deshaun Watson and pay him a ton of money indicated that we we're going to see more of an emphasis on the passing game. And obviously that's going to have a, a huge impact on, on fantasy production across the board, regardless of efficiency. But what does that look like, you know, with a, a full off season where you can focus solely on a game plan for Deshaun Watson and you're not having to game plan for Jacoby Brissett, et cetera. Like the, this could be, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be a very telling several weeks. Uh, they do get the Pittsburgh Steelers in week two, which uh, we know that that's a, a pretty solid defense. I don't mean to be a home. First couple here, of but... games are against some good defenses. Like that's if they play well against the Bengals and Steelers opening up the year in offense, then I'm going to be really, really excited. But if it's bad, 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 might be willing to sell low on a couple of these guys. I think that's fair. Uh, all right, okay. Let's talk about a wide receiver that you want to see a lot of here in week one. We'll get to that player next. This episode is brought to you by underdog football season kicks off this Thursday. I can't believe we made it. We're finally here and there is no better way to get in on the action than with underdog fantasy in their pick them game. Just pick between two to five players select whether they'll go higher or lower on one of their stats, then do what you usually do on kickoff night. Watch the game. You can win up to 20 times your money in a single game by going five for five. It's a fantasy game, but you can win real, actual money. It's legal in over 30 states, and it's so much fun. If you want to build your dream team today, head over uh, to their easy-to-use mobile app or the website underdogfantasy.com. When you sign up with promo code locked on, and not only will Underdog double your first deposit up to $100, you can't beat that, but they also have a special pick 'em that's available right now in their lobby. All Patrick Mahomes has to do is get over one passing yard for your pick to be correct. It's free money, it's like a free square. All you have to do is get four more right, and then you can win up to 20 times your money. Remember, that's Underdog Fantasy. Sign up with promo code locked on. And use the link in the description or scan QR code if you're watching us right now on YouTube. All right, Kate, let's talk about uh, a wide receiver in Denver that you are excited to see. Uh, who is it? I don't know if excited is the right word, I guess. But, like, this guy's got to show me something right now. And this is going to be, I feel like, the last chance of hope for his dynasty value. It's Broncos wide receiver, Cortland Sutton, who has the stage kind of set for some, you know, potential big time opportunity. Um, you know, Jerry Judy 
uh, who has been widely projected to be, you know, set for a, a monstrous 2023 leap, uh, potentially in, you know, Russell Wilson's second year with Sean Payton. Um, this offense has generally sort of projected on the up and up, but, you know, a, a hamstring injury to Jerry Judy, you know, I, I don't think it sounds like he's going to play in week one. No. Um, and it seems just based on like that moderate severity that, you know, even if, if he makes that return to, uh, to, to playing and, and being active in the game, he might be limited, uh, not at a hundred percent. So I think this is going to be one last guiding chance for Cortland Sutton, uh, to actually prove something to fantasy managers. Now, um, you know, had a, a couple of decent games in the 2022 season. Um, the second highest yardage game of his career came last year. Um, had uh, seven catches, 122 receiving yards, no touchdowns. But, um, you know, you you like to see that, right? That came in week two against the Houston Texans, who actually had a pretty decent passing defense last year. Um, I do think, you know, this is, this is a, a wide receiver who has been continually falling down my ranks, down everybody's ranks. But... Um, you know, could have a, a little bit of value here if he gets off to a strong start with the opportunity. This is how low I am on Cortland Sutton, at least going into the off season. I, I'm in a dynasty league that only has three bench spots. So you got to be really careful about who you draft. Three bench spots? Three bench spots. I traded him for, for an open bench spot. I, I didn't get anything back. That's literally all I traded with for is just the bench spot. If it doesn't happen now for Cortland Sutton, it's just never going to happen, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you mentioned Jerry Judy, not likely to play in week one. Tim Patrick out, KJ Hamler gone. Uh, Greg Dulcich, who is another name that I was going to bring up. He's a year two tight end that's struggling a little bit. Marvin Mims is a rookie, probably going to play in the slot some. Like Sutton needs to dominate right now or else it's just, it's probably over for him as a, you know, I, I, I don't want to say as a fantasy asset, but as somebody that like, yeah. you rely on from game to game, it, he needs to do it right now. This is like the last ditch effort. Um, you know, like even, even when he's, he's been healthy and and we've seen him uh, play pretty well, like the, the ceiling, I think we had projected to be much higher than we originally had. We know the floor is super, super low for Cortland Sutton, unfortunately, um, just five games in his career so far with 20 or more points in PPR formats. Um, you know, I, I think obviously this is a player with a lot of volatility, but if you have any lingering Cortland Sutton shares, I think this is the chance for you to, um, you know, maybe reap some of that value, sell low if he can get off to a start, uh, a, a decent start for this season. Um, might be able to bait, you know, one of these teams who is like, ah, Cortland Sutton. Um, this this might be a, an interesting opportunity for any lingering Sutton managers. Can I give you one more guy that I'm really interested in seeing in this Denver team? How long do we think the leash is for Russell Wilson? Like if Wilson gets off to a bad start, let's say the first three games, they go one and two, and he just really struggles. Like is there any chance that like Sean Payton either starts calling other teams about quarterbacks or they go to Jared Stidham? Ah, maybe. I mean, like they're, they're still so much invested, uh, you know, like looking at Russell Wilson's contract, it's still, it's still very much a disaster for the Denver Broncos. Um, you know, they obviously have the draft capital invested in, you know, Russell Wilson, they also have capital invested in Sean Payton. Like this is a year that definitely needs to go, go right and, and go well. I mean, he's for, 35, Kate. He's 35. He's coming off just a disaster of a season. Um, but you know, like I, I, I kind of wonder, um, you know, especially with how bad things were like, you know, the news reports about Nathaniel Hackett and, and how big a mess, how significant that mess was for the Broncos locker room in general. Um, you know, this was a team that could not get plays off, could not communicate effectively whatsoever. Like this was, this was a disaster top to bottom. I do think Sean Payton uh, improves the trajectory. Do we see Russell Wilson ever hit his peak? Uh, no. no, probably not. But um, you know, I do think he's healthier this season than he, he was last um, could see a little bit of that mobility, but 
you know, I, I honestly think this team is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. I don't know that any team uh, in in the market, unless the, the Broncos are, are willing to eat a significant chunk of that contract in order to get a deal done with another team, I feel like they're kind of handcuffed, at least for the time being. It feels like they're probably just going to have to ride – this through the season, I was gonna say Broncos country. Let's ride. Uh, get, probably gonna just write it out all year long, right? And then if it doesn't go well this year, and there there isn't significant signs of improvement. I just I don't see Sean Payton, Payton waiting around and just being like, hey, you know what? We signed him to a big deal. Let's let's keep going. Like he wants to win, and he's so competitive. Uh, so again, I just want to see some signs of life from this Broncos offense. Uh, We'll see, Kate. It's it's just an offense that I don't feel very optimistic about. And frankly, it's an offense that I have not invested a lot into this offense. Yes. Yes. I think that's totally fair. One other player I do want to mention, I think there's a lot of players to be watching in this game. Um, but a guy that I think stands to see a, a substantial increase in his dynasty value uh, if things go well to start the season is Javante Williams, who yes. yeah. we had previously talked about as a, a top five dynasty running back fairly easily um, has seen a, a pretty significant fall in his ADP just based on, I, I think that, that, you know, injury history alone right now being drafted on average as RB 15 behind Josh Jacobs, just ahead of Derek Henry, just ahead of JK Dobbins. Bit, it, you know what? I think it, as things have gotten, um, you know, a, a little bit more positive regarding Javante Williams, the status um, you know, I, I think this we've generally seen a, a slight increase in this in this ADP. Um, but I, I think what's going to be key is uh, like him being a potential value, even even at that draft position, at, even at that draft cost, because um, look you know, at the names if, behind him. If he can. Or you said, what are the names behind I said, him? look at the names behind yeah, him. There's Derek really Henry, J.K. Dobbins, um, Miles Sanders, Aaron Jones, like. There was None one name you skipped guys. over right there that we liked a little bit. Yeah, uh, it's it's Damian <laughs> Pierce, uh, but you know what? I'm I'm like I, I think for the upside that he offers, it, like I I'm willing to to bet that we're gonna see a, a rise back to you know into the right. top ten for Javante Williams at some point this season. This year, hypothetical, yeah. hypothetical. Let's say Javante Williams looks good in week one, good in week two, good week three. And we get to October. Okay. Yep. What's like the highest you could see him being ranked and drafted on, on dynasty league football, because I think if he stays healthy and he averages 73 rushing yards per game, 25 receiving yards, like I could see him going as a top 10 running back pretty easily. I could see him, uh, probably climbing as high as RB seven, uh, right behind Jonathan Taylor, Brees Hall, Jameer Gibbs. Like, I, I think he's still young, doesn't have a, a lot of touches, uh, to his name so far in his career. Um, you know, I, I do think that right, right now, if you want to bet on the talent, this is probably going to be like the ground floor of, of pricing for Javante Williams, especially if he puts up a, a solid start to the season. Really quickly before we go, Jonathan Taylor being drafted as RB six, Javante Williams as RB 15. If we get out of the first month of the season and Javante Williams is at like 400 total yards and four touchdowns. And we still don't know if Jonathan Taylor is going to come off the PUP list. If he's still holding out, waiting for a deal, it's going to be like, Hey, there's, here's an asset that's younger than Jonathan Taylor who's actually playing, you could trade, you can keep him or you could trade him for Jonathan Taylor, who hasn't played in a whole calendar year. And we still don't know if he's going to play. I, my prediction right now is they end up being drafted close to each other. By the time we get to October 1st. Bye, bye, bye. There you go. Uh, let's talk about another running back that we are excited to see in week one. We will get to him next. This episode is brought to you by eBay. Uh, we absolutely love eBay. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy football host Vinny Iyer to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week, all season long. Whether you're prepping for a draft or scouting the waiver wire, every week we're going to provide you the players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So with draft prep underway for the upcoming season, 
Let's see who Vinny has picked out for us in this week's eBay's Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. This week, it's Khalil Herbert, somebody that Kate and I have been recommending all year long. If you need an undervalued running back to help give your fantasy football team a smoother ride in 2023, then you better be ready to draft Bear Speedster Khalil Herbert. He's clearly the most explosive running back on this roster, and he's going to get the playoff of Justin Fields and a little bit of a committee, including Deontay Foreman and Roshan Johnson. Look for Herbert to give you the most high leverage touches, working most with Johnson in a favorable run heavy offense. Vinny Iyer from Lockdown Fantasy Football is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows that a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. The same is true with your vehicle. With eBay's guaranteed fit and over 122 million parts and accessories available for your vehicle right at your fingertips, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Air filters, brakes, batteries, taillights, alternators, uh, shocks, struts, you name it, eBay Motors has it. And they'll make sure it's the right fit for your car because eBay Guaranteed Fit helps you understand exactly what part for your uh, vehicle you'll need the first time. So go forth, switch gears, crank the AC, and say goodbye to sweating. If your ride needs a little fixing up because now you know you'll always be set up for success from the get-go. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, everything your vehicle is calling for is just a click away. For the parts and accessories that fit your vehicle, just look for the green check. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices at ebaymotors.com. And let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty podcast. We want to thank you for making us your first listen every day. The Locked On Ultimate NFL Season Preview is here. The seven-episode extravaganza brings opinions analysis, and plenty of debate from all 32 of our Locked On NFL hosts with added insights from our Locked On national experts. It's a can't-miss series before the season kicks off. Catch every single episode on Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Kate, I want to talk about Rashad Penny a little bit. Uh, man, we know he we, he's really good. What do you want to see from him in week one? I want to see snaps, Marcus. Like I, I feel like that is honestly probably the the lamest answer I could give you. Uh, but I want to see snaps. I, I think this preseason revealed a lot of questions about the pecking order for this Eagles backfield. Kenneth Gainwell. It it seems like there's there's been you know increased in steam uh, for his potential to you know take over this backfield as the RB one. They brought in DeAndre Swift. They signed Rashad Penny, neither of them to, to big deals, but having each of these, these, you know, very different skill sets, very different running backs in the building. Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's all a testament to, you know, the, the clear devotion to the run game. But, you know, if one of these guys is going to emerge as, as a potential value for dynasty or, or save his value for dynasty, it's gotta be Rashad Penny who, Felt like it was slipping down the depth chart a little bit, made the final 53 man roster, which was great news. But I want to see him get involved. Um, you know, anytime he's touched the ball while healthy, we see an elusive running back. We see a guy that can can shake off contact. Like I got a stat for you. Can I give you a stat? Yes, please. You're gonna be blown away by this one. Rashad Penny has had 11 or more touches in a game, only like 10 or 11 times. It's not been very often, but anytime it, let me try to rephrase this it, in every single game that he's had 11 or more touches, his career yards per carry in those games is 7.8 yards. That's, That's the unreal. highest in NFL history. So basically whenever he gets a full workload, you're basically creating the greatest running back that we've ever seen play football. I just want to see the Eagles feed him. Like I think there's going to be this belief or idea like, Hey, let's, Let's kind of save him for November, December. I, I think the Eagles should just do the opposite. Like, just ride him early in the season. If the wheels fall off in November, it's whatever. You got to November. But this could be like a franchise-changing running back if he's healthy. Yeah, and, you know, again, signed him for pretty much nothing. Like, this this could end up being one of the best draft values um, that, that we've seen either in redraft or in Dynasty if you were willing to take the shot. But – he continues to be one of these players that I can't quit because of that efficiency that you mentioned. And 
he's performed as an RB one anytime he's been given yes. the opportunity. It's just been the health. And, you know, we I heard some reports that like, I, I think he's playing at a lower weight this off season or playing at a lower weight this season um, with hopes that that's going to maybe change, you know, his, his training regimen and, and all of this could change and, and impact the way that he remains healthy and, and keep him on the field um, as, you know, even if he's, he's, seeing a, a higher touch volume per game. So I, I want to see him involved, but I mean, Marcus, if Rashad Penny comes out of the gate and he is a featured part of this offense, I I could see there being a, a you know, maybe a, a rush to sign him or, or, you know, trade, trade to acquire him by some of these dynasty teams are in a win now mode. Um, RB 42 well, yeah. right now, dynasty startup ADP. Um, Hypothetical again. I love these hypotheticals. If I told you that Rashad Penny for the first month of the season is going to average 15 and a half touches a game, where would you rank him? Uh, overall dynasty rankings. Yep. Um, just for the first quarter of the season, I, I think I'd probably bump him up uh, somewhere in the thirties. That, right that's kind of what I'm feeling. And I, yeah. I don't feel like 15 and a half touches is all that unreasonable right you give them 13 carries and two and a half receptions a game yeah and i i think if that were to happen um you know the the outcome is you get an rb1 for as long <laughs> as he's on the field and we know this is going to be an offense that scores a lot we know this is a, an offense that is going to run the ball very well and effectively like this is a dream scenario for rashad penny and mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I can picture myself uh, probably sending way too much of my my draft capital, like a you know a third round pick for Rashad Penny, if if he's going to help bolster right me, now. even if it is just to start the season. But hopefully, it's not just to start the season. Hopefully, we actually see him stay healthy and on the field and getting lots of touches. But the beautiful thing, Marcus, about Rashad Penny is because of that efficiency, he doesn't necessarily need a ton of touches. So. This could be a win-win as long as he remains healthy and the Eagles give him a chance. Because if they do, I have a feeling they're going to like what they're going to see. And mm -hmm. dynasty managers as well are going to like what they're going to see, uh, especially at this potential value. All right. That is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Lockdown Dynasty your first listen every day. Again, every day is on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Matt and Ryan will get you ready for week one. Kate, you and I are back on Friday to break down Lions, Chiefs, and also talk about all the news that happened all week long and get you ready for an awesome week of football. I am so glad that we are back. Go check us out on YouTube. Uh, we are free and available on all plat platforms. Go follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Maju. Check out our work at Pro Football Focus. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. Have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you guys right back here tomorrow.